All right, everybody. So, welcome to Riverside here. It says, uh, welcome to our live show. It's funny. Hey guys, official start. Focus. All right, here's here's what's going on. We are now at exactly about one year since I started this um, this account. Okay, and it's been a pretty uh, pretty wild and intense uh, year. I don't need this actually. Um, so um, last fall i began to do live spaces and this was uh for the bulgarian audience and uh i think i think i'll probably resume spaces uh but but in english because i will be doing stuff for the bulgarian audience separately so it's not going to be on this channel this will be mostly for the international audience and I will be I will be campaigning I will be campaigning to get people onto this um, account people people that I know from different countries that um, really whose voices should be heard there's there's a lot of good people out there who have something valuable to share with uh, you know this is a this is a space for Christians for believers. So our primary goal here is to encourage, enable, and empower each other to be effective in uh, sharing the, the good news of Yeshua the Messiah, okay? And so um, I'm blocking probably, uh, I don't know, 40. I think I looked at the... At the um, statistics today i'm blocking about 40 30 to 40 requests for people to join uh every month uh, because people want to join for all sorts of uh, ridiculous uh, uh reasons they don't know why they're joining that's what people do on social media they jo join a bunch of accounts and uh, they don't know what they're there for that's not how this is supposed to work this place actually is supposed to be a place for people who actually know each other and they have a, sometimes maybe even real real connections in real life, not just in virtual space, right? At the least bit, I know everybody or almost everybody. And sometimes people recommend other people and they bring other people on and that's fine. But here's the, here's the main thing I would like to share with you. We are now entering, we are now entering an amazing time in history, a time of great opportunity for people like us to be very, very effective and to get a lot of things done in the, in the next four years during Donald Trump's presidency. Now, if you look at the Bible, you, 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 there's actually, think about that. There are actually entire books in the Torah, the historic books, that have to do with storytelling about the reign of and the rule of certain kings. And we know that they're the righteous kings of Israel and the unrighteous kings of Israel. Why? Because during, during certain um, epochs or certain episodes of history, under one king, history develops in one way. And, and during... During another, uh, the rule and the reign of another king, history develops differently. And <clears throat> even though America is not an empire, even though Donald Trump and every other president has to run for elections, has to compete against other people because we elect our leaders, okay? Other people, other, other countries don't have to do that. Chinese, the Chinese president doesn't have to run election campaigns. He just has to make sure that he kills off all the other uh, communist uh, uh, contenders for the for the uh, emperor, the, the the main seat of the dictator. Make sure he kills them off or buys them off or something like that. That's what secures the elections or the 
rule of, of a communist dictator. Putin has been the president for how many years now? Over two decades. Uh, his elections are sham elections. He does not believe in democracy or re republicanism or anything like that, which is another ridiculous thing because a lot of stupid Americans are infatuated with Putin. You know, even people who are in our own camp, MAGA supporters, Trump supporters, and they're like, oh, Trump is great. Trump is a defender of Christian values. Trump is, I'm sorry, Putin is great. Putin's defender of, of, of Christian family values. Uh, Putin is not woke. Putin is going to save us from the wokeness of the West. No. As it turns out, Trump is the one who is going to save us, if you want to use that language, save us from wokeness. Trump, the MAGA movement, traditionalism, the traditional people with traditional values, people who believe in what the Western civilization has always been about, the Judeo-Christian foundation of morality, worldview, and culture. And the defender of that civilization and the defender of that culture is not Vladimir Putin. You have to be seriously confused to believe that. Or maybe you were bought off. Maybe someone paid you, right? Paid you off and, and they hired you to be a spokesman or, or some whatever. But most people are not corrupted. They're not uh, uh, on Putin's payroll. Most people who are defending Putin in the West are just gullible and they're falling for the whole, well, if Biden is bad, and if, and if he's against Putin, then Trump is kind of buddies with Putin. And so, you know, no, Trump is playing the diplomatic game. He, he is he is managing Putin. And during his four years of his the four years of his presidency previously, he imposed more sanctions on Putin than than any previous administration. During Trump's time, Putin did not misbehave and didn't start any wars. Why? Because there's a strong man in Washington, D.C., and uh, people who hate Donald Trump don't see him as a strong man. They don't. They have they have whatever beef they have with Donald Trump. And they um, they just uh, see him as a buffoon, as a goofy character, as a caricature, you know, showman, narcissist, whatever they think of Donald Trump. They the filter they have is preventing them to see the reality that Donald Trump knows how to speak the language of dictators and how to let them know, you touch us, we will destroy you. You harm us, we will harm you. That is the only way bullies behave. That's the only language bullies understand. That's not what the, you know, the Democrats and Kamala Harris and the Bidens and the Obamas and the Clintons, they, they're not like that, right? They, they start wars, they start stupid wars, meaningless wars, wars they, they can never win or maybe not even want it to win. They just start wars to, to start wars, right? But that's not Donald Trump. Donald Trump is a true champion of peace. He does not want war. He wants to prevent wars from happening. And the way he's going to achieve that is through a mix of um, really the, the Reagan doctrine of peace through strength. It's really important for you to understand it. So I don't think I'm the guy who kind of knows it all. I don't think I understand everything. But I would, I would also contend that I've been involved enough in the civics arena, in the political arena, in various different ways through my interests and through different things I've done, I'm probably more plugged in than most people. And so from that position, I will continue to speak and I will continue to influence and I will continue to lead and guide. They have this expression in English, you know, thought leadership, right? Thought leadership means that the way of thinking that I'm exhibiting and the way of thinking I'm promoting, um, I believe in. And I believe it will benefit people if they choose to share in that way of thinking. So if you want to continue to think, if you want to follow liberal um, liberal thought leaders, if you want to follow liberal thought leaders, go for it. That's fine. Um, this is not who I am and this is not who we are. And everyone has to choose, you know, what influences will there be on their mind? So... Um, 
the influence that I would like to be on on people and the direction I'd like to lead people through thought leadership is um, first of all the biblical uh, framework of thinking, the biblical biblical worldview. Secondarily, uh, because it's biblical, it's traditional, and the reason we have to say that is because liberals also talk about the Bible. Liberals also talk about God and Christianity or Judaism, but liberal Christians, liberal Jews, liberal uh, whatever, they are, uh, they're worthless. They really are not part of the solution. They're part of the problem. We are part of the solution because we're presenting a clear dividing line. We're saying you want to be part of this worldview of, of degeneracy. You know, you want to follow the people who can't tell a man from a woman and the people who can't tell uh, communism from from capitalism and from free market. If you want to follow the people who think uh, Christians and Muslim worship the same God, if you want to follow the people who are like representative of that whole um, mixture of confusion, which really is a kind of like a demonic infestation is happening in that space. If you want to continue to be part of that, if you want to be influenced part of that, you go for it. Go for it, man. Jump into it and be that. Be messed up. Be a communist. Be a jihadist. Be whatever you want to be, right? There's enough outlets and there's enough literature and there's enough places where you can be. But if you want to understand, grow into what we call the traditional worldview and the traditional mindset, which has to do with the way we see the world, with the way through the prism of the traditional understanding and interpretation of the Bible. You can take the Bible and you can translate it and you can interpret it in this way or that way. A lot of people, there's many different ways, but overall, generally speaking, there's like these two camps, the liberal camp, which takes the Bible and it uses it to fit its own agenda. You know, there's a lot of people these days in the West who talk about God being a woman. So feminism is definitely one of the problems that we need to expose over and over again. Uh, God being a woman. Uh, now the whole transgender movement where, you know, men can become women and women can become men, which is a complete travesty and degeneracy and must be exposed over and over again. We must help the victims of transgenderism. OK, and, <clears throat> um, you know, there's there's people who use the Bible to make it justify their own degeneracy. And. And that's going on, like right here, okay? There's like two buckets, <laughs> two, two categories, right? Um, <clears throat> but there's this other bucket here of the traditional, the traditional interpretation of Scripture, the traditional understanding of God, man, man's destiny, mankind's destiny under God. That's who we are, okay? And so... When you make a, a choice, when you decide, look, I'm going to be part of this group here. Okay? <laughs> if you haven't noticed, I got two buckets here, two categories, right? The liberals. And here's, here's who we are. <laughs> so when, when you make your choice, when you determine I'm going to be this, I'm going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to follow the traditional understanding of who God is, who man is. Uh, I'm going to be, I'm going to be that person. I'm, I'm choosing this worldview. Because this is the worldview that has been, um, that has preserved Western civilization for thousands of years. This is the worldview the West chose when, when the West became Christian, which is another big topic that we have to talk about over and over again, okay? When the West became Christian, it actually preserved itself. The faith, the Christian faith, is what preserved the West to even become the West, or remain the West, to win over Islam, that's another big topic we're going to talk about. So we have the liberal versus conservative interpretation and understanding of the Bible. We have the communist central government, central economy versus free market economy clash and, you know, two camps. We have the, um, you know, Christianity versus Islam, or actually it's Islam versus everybody else, like problem that we have to talk about. You know, men and women, feminism versus traditional values. There's a lot of categories that, that need to be gone over, discussed. We, we need to educate people. We need to, uh, we need to, we need to help people understand, come to the understanding of what these things mean to us individually. And secondarily, to 
um, to train you for you to become an influencer and create a environment where you impact others because i bet you if anything after 16 years of obama biden and 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 the whole woke insanity there is a lot of people that you know who are confused on those things and so because i don't have an agenda to be a superstar social media anything i prefer to create a closed environment a safer environment where we don't waste time with random people, right? So the whole idea with Threefold is to, and this channel and this account and, you know, other accounts, we have a YouTube account, so we're going to see how those will work together. But the whole um, purpose of this is to bring the people who want to grow and learn into this environment, to train them and equip them, and to activate them to become influencers in their own circumstances, in their own world, for God, for God's kingdom, for America, if you're an American, for if you're in uh, whatever country you're in, for, for God's truth and righteousness, become an influencer, become a discipler of disciples, right? Because we have to grow. Our movement has to grow. The body of Christ has to grow. Um, the traditional movement has to grow. The MAGA movement has to grow. And I'm going to do my part in, in egging you on and providing that teaching and training. We'll interview the right people. We'll bring the right resources. And we will spin off new projects where we're going to encourage you to become, you know, a leader in your own right, an influencer in your own right. For those of you who have never done that, some of you, some of you, of course, have done it some of you who are on this uh on this account you have done it you have <clears throat> you have your own history and you belong your voice needs to be heard your experience needs to be heard right but we're gonna we're gonna propose some ideas of how we can increase our influence you know and and get you to a place where you're activated to use all of your gifts all of your capabilities because i just don't think the traditional churches necessarily are interested or capable of doing that because unfortunately traditional churches have a very different priority uh system the priority for them is just to it, it all revolves around the sunday morning service or whatever the 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 liturgy the service the whatever it's a different agenda a different agenda is driving the priorities in most churches and and they either don't have again they either don't have the ability to train you in these things and to activate you, or they even don't have the intention. So, um, with that, uh, I will be I will be proposing uh, classes and courses, training courses, and really will be engaging with you individually. Uh, I have sold my home here in the United States. I'm free to travel, and I will be transient. I will be in Bulgaria. I will be in the Philippines, and I will be here. I will be moving between the three countries and we'll be spinning off ministry initiatives in the different countries. I'm working with different leaders in the different places, and this is these are the relationships that, that God has brought into my life, and I will pursue that. So um, Threefold is going to be, you know, this is Elon Musk app on the Internet. X was critical and crucial to the election of Donald Trump and the saving of freedom and liberty in the United States. And guess what? It will continue to be. So we are in the right place. This is the right place to be. We're going to use uh, YouTube or whatever. We're going to use other social media. But this is the place to be, right? And we will continue that going forward. Well, uh, 20 minutes, nice little test, but also some really important things. Drop me a line. You can message me right here. Now, I communicate with some of you on Telegram, but honestly, I would prefer um, I prefer um, X. Um, so if you're using X, chat me on X. I follow that. Or reach out to me, because if this is not resonating with you, if you're just watching and listening to what I'm saying, you're like yawning, okay, that's fine. Let me know what, you know, if this is not your cup of tea, if this is not what gets you going, if this is not like, yeah, I, I, I want to be part of that, right? How do, how do I become part of that, George? If this is not happening, you know, sign off and do something else. Get excited about life elsewhere. Do something else. But we want to get people 
excited, interested, enlightened, trained, activated. Okay, that's the whole idea here. It's not just for George to post stuff, you know, stuff posting. <laughs> this is not for for me to post and and itch my scratch, right? To scratch my itch. Uh, this is this is for you. This is for us. So, anyways, drop me a line if you're seeing this, like it, drop a comment. Because I'm not even seeing, I'm not even sure how many of you are logging in or watching this, but drop me a line, drop me a comment, um, and let's take this, uh, let's take this to the next next level, okay? Testing is over with. Soon I will be presenting to you a sequence of live streams like what you're watching right now, where you will be able to participate with chats and questions and all everything on issues related from biblical stuff to politics to technology to trends and things like that so once once i get a little bit more comfortable with my schedule i will be able to commit to doing these and communicating with you on a more active basis and really the big question is you know if i can be of if i can be a benefit to you and help you in what you have to do for god let me know i'll be praying for you supporting you in whatever way I can and I uh, look forward to us being uh, a resource to you and um, yeah I look forward to interviews I look forward to just to educate empower and increase our influence in the United States and around the world God bless you and we'll be in touch soon